after a short absence due to time constraints, it's back. Now, a quick recap on the rules. To be in with a chance to win Shitweasel of the Week, you need to be a politician, media hag, or undemocratic tosspot who pipes up from obscurity talking utter rubbish. You will know the sort of rubbish I'm talking about based on the previous worthy winners, such as Sadiq Khan, Anna Sozzleberry, Venereal Disease, otherwise known as Victoria Derbyshire, Boris Johnson's Neighbours, and of course the BBC. So, quite the field of undemocratic slimy fuck pigs, I think you would agree, and you can guess the sort of behaviour that would make you eligible for this prestigious award. Now, usually we would have a whole host of nominations for this position, since there is a never-ending amount of shit weasels out there. But today, we have a special episode, because we recently witnessed a Ramon in Tosspot that is not likely to be beaten by anyone we can think up. Well, I tried and I really couldn't, but in the absence of nominations, we do have some notable mentions. First off being the Corbinated Chicken for hanging on like a fart in a spacesuit as a commenter on my last video so diplomatically put it, continuing to defend his friends from around the world when he should be hiding on the back benches where he belongs. So definitely worth a mention. Jeremy Corbyn has the greatest respect for President Abbas and those in the Palestinian Authority. I've met them many times. And as you as the Prime... <laughs> Next on the honourable mentions list, we have the SNP, who attempted to push for a separate Scottish visa, essentially creating backdoor immigration into the country once we have left the EU. Yet again, more true shit weasel behaviour, and worth a mention, I think you would agree. Next up, and almost a week ago now, there was the Ramonin Soy Boy audience member on Question Time, who blamed the media for brainwashing them thick northern voters into backing the Tories and democracy. I'm sure most of you will all remember the soy boy. And I was just wondering how Labour's going to win any election when his newspapers like The Sun and The Times are having such a effect on northerners, for example, manipulating them. Let's use the word brainwashing because that's really what it comes down to with their mm. headlines mm. and so on. There's no chance All right. mm. without their well, support. Well, all of them. Mm. Well, the vast majority of right. papers. Mm. Uh, and Rupert Murdoch, I bring up particularly. Perfectly placed to answer that question. <laughs> I've never heard so much rubbish. I mean, what a good excuse <laughs> for the biggest Labour election defeat since 1935. I mean, it really is pathetic to blame the press. Um, well, honestly, they... I think you are underestimating the intelligence and wit and savvy of no, your that's fellow pathetic, citizens. Uh... And I think Labour under Jeremy Corbyn and Labour under almost any of the leaders, and I'm sorry to say I include you in this at the moment, Emily, uh, are um, making the same mistake of underestimating the electorate, pretending that Labour is not in an existentialist crisis. It could sink further in votes. There's about another 30 seats in Labour's red wall that could easily go. And um, I don't even think they're particularly listening to Londoners. I don't know who they're listening to in Labour apart from themselves. And our final notable mention this week is the independent repussy of Mike Graham, the talk radio host who has resorted to the age-old lefty tactic when he can't defeat an argument or is forbidden by his masters from talking about it and instead starts name-calling. This is, of course, relating to the YouTuber Laura Towler tearing him a new arsehole on Twitter recently because he shut down a lady who called into his show making a valid point about UN migrant replacement policies that does not take much researching to know she is right. Considering we heard Nicola Sturgeon, leader of the Scottish National Party, state exactly that in an interview I covered in my video yesterday about the SNP. As you will remember, she wanted mass EU immigration to replace the Scottish population and make it grow. Little Mickey has took to abusing Laura and her followers on Twitter, so definitely worthy of a mention, and in normal times, a dead cert for winning this prestigious award today. But this is not normal times we're living in, because we had our undisputed winner that told every shit weasel the world over to hold his fucking beer. So let's not beat around the bush any longer and reveal our winner. Can I get a drum roll, please? Of course, it's Terry Christian, the worthless Ramonin fuck pig who appeared on Good Morning Britain earlier today like he was Mystic Meg, predicting the future and spouting off constantly, not letting anyone get a word in edgeways. 
This prat is the stop Brexit Steve of the journalist world that has no valid arguments and just sits there screaming bullshit he read in The Guardian. He was on the show with Marc Francois, who, to be honest, might as well have stayed in bed because he did not get a chance to finish even one sentence. So we will take a look at a couple of clips in order to see the snivelling shit weasel behaviour from this septic spot on the arse of humanity. Well, okay, here's a just, fact. Go here's on. a fact. The people voted to leave in 2016 in the referendum. No, it was a democratic vote. Uh, but in the most and recent election, 54% of people okay. actually voted. Right, they voted again, right, emphatically in a general okay. election, to just, leave again. So, give, no, well, Terry, they won't be voting for you when they're losing the jobs. Terry, you lost. Apparently, sorry, I've not lost twice. It's like the anti-vaxxers winning a thing. You were defeated twice. You don't have any vaccines. You lost. OK, it's funny you should mention vaccines, Terry, because my issue with what you've been saying on these oh, Brexit issues... More fake is, moral outrage. There's not really moral outrage. I mean, people can make their own minds up about yeah, what you've tweeted. You, well, let well, someone I'm else say something yeah. for a Let second. me just say what you've tweeted. Yeah. This was in uh, August uh, 2019. Uh, it's a flu, you said, so mainly OAPs. If they voted to destroy our lives by voting Brexit, uh -huh. let's hope it's a good virulent strain this year. Oh, good, yeah, let them You literally a wanted OAPs to Oh, be... it was a joke. It was an answer to someone funny? else's. Oh, absolutely. OAPs should die. Hilarious. They don't seem to mind 120,000 people have died because of austerity. Mm. How many people are going to die when we leave the EU? So you think it's, What's going to happen you to think those it's northern... To wish those OAPs provinces, those dead places? in a flu virus. Oh, that's a ridiculous thing to say. We're it talking is a about, ridiculous will it destroy say. Britain? Yeah. It already has. It's it caused okay. massive division. All right. We're going to lose jobs. And three days ago... Poorer. We've already Terry, become the seventh... Let other people speak. ...seventh in All the country. Having said that you... I'm letting you speak. Having said... Having... Three days ago, you tweeted this, and you then deleted it for obvious reasons, I would suggest. No, because you uh, said, a friend of mine who's... You said uh, Brexiteers is, deserve is the all the job losses and hardship yes, heading they their do. way and their families. All those tough Christmases ahead yes, of their they kids. Do. All their short-term pain. Yes, but they do. But I will do. get behind it in future by buying a big issue off the pitiable saps. Yes. You well, deleted that. Do you know why? People who, despite all the evidence, mm. have voted to make their own lives and everybody else's harder are... And you'll see that. Terry, can I just say, Britain. look, anybody, anybody at home having their breakfast, watching this programme, yeah. can just see from your whole attitude and your My bearing, attitude. And the way you speak stick about to people fact. who Terry, voted to leave, on. you yeah. are a living embodiment of why people voted mm. to leave the and, European Union. And what's that? Because, Stupidity, because they didn't want to spend their lives being lectured by people I'm not, like I'm not lecturing them, I'm warning them. I'm you, you called Brexit look at the evidence. Okay, Terry, you look at the Terry, evidence. You Terry, called, you have you have called people who voted to leave Idiots. unread cretins. Okay. Most of them Mark, are. Mark. Well, wow. 17.4 million people. Yeah, you called them cretins. Country. Most of them have unread changed cretins. their mind now. That's, A lot of yes. them, uh, it was lies it doesn't on the doesn't deny if they're OAPs who voted Brexit, Lots they should are. die of flu. No, well, I didn't say and that Brexiteers either. Brexiteers' families the deserve all the hardship heading their outrage. way. Why did we win all those seats in the north and Bishop okay. Because you lied. To Barrow. You've lied right. to people. You've inferred there. that it will well, make their lives better. I have to say... When you know that it won't. You lost. It will make your... You lost. I thought these arguments had all been... I mean, there it is, guys. Take your pick which point you want to use for the reason he won this week. Any one of them is good enough. And I cut out most of the interview there. That is just a few short highlights from the full interview available on the Good Morning Britain YouTube channel. But either way, wishing the elderly dead or calling Brexiteers unread cretins are both worthy reasons to win this week. Because actually, his snarling, spitting bile showed the country what an utter cretinous cunt he actually is. So for that reason, Terry, you are this week's Shit Weasel of the Week. Now jump back into irrelevance, you worthless tosspot. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. I will try and get them made weekly from now on. So join my Discord server to put in your nominations for next week's episode. As some of you will know, I have started doing live streams and uploading gaming content on my second channel. If you are interested in joining me for a chat in real time during one of my live streams, have an interest in gaming related content on YouTube, or simply want to follow me over there because you are a legend, the link to subscribe will be down in the video description and as a pinned comment. I hope to see you all there. Now as always, I want to thank our YouTube, PayPal, Patreon and Subscribestar members for supporting the channel, along with everyone who watches my videos. Remember to let me know what you guys think down in the comments section below, leave a like, Subscribe with the notification bell and share this video as it helps the channel a lot. And I'll see you all in the next one. There is a pattern consistent throughout history of oppressed people turning on the oppressors. Slaves against their owners, 
the peasantry against the feudal barons, colonies, Mr. Verhofstadt, against their empires. And that is why Britain is leaving. And it doesn't matter which language you use, we are going and we are glad to be going. We're off. Ramon! Ramon!